right, guys, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we're going to give it a shot. Yo, what's going on? It is 1 p.m. here in Dubuque, Iowa. I'm broadcasting live from the parking lot at the Kennedy Mall. Kennedy Mall? From the Kennedy Mall in Dubuque, Iowa. Uh, it's a little bit unusual, but it's spring break this week. And this is the only way that I can get the live stream in for today. So we're going to try it from here. I basically really just wanted to get this unboxing done. I wanted to show you guys this shoe so that way I could film the shoes, so that way I could run in the shoe, and I wanted to get that done. Plus, we missed so many live streams last week. I wanted to make sure we still got one in today. So we're going to try to make do with what we can from the parking lot. So uh, before we get further into it, let me know if you can hear me okay. I'm trying the lavalier mic with the iPhone here. We're going to see how that works. Uh, and while we're waiting, Let's say hi to everyone that's listening on the podcast on the audio only version. So if you can envision this, I'm just sitting in the uh, passenger seat, sitting shotgun in the minivan in the parking lot. The kids are in there. I think they're going to um, American Eagle, Bath and Body Works, Claire's. They're doing all that stuff. I was able to do a little bit of shopping with my youngest daughter, uh, but now I ducked out for a little bit. So I can come out here. Hopefully you're getting a lot done if you're listening to this today, maybe while you're running errands. And for everyone else watching this later but not live, welcome to the number one podcast to listen to if you are waiting in the parking lot. Maybe you're not waiting for your family to finish shopping, but maybe you are waiting to pick up your kids from uh, track practice or softball practice or soccer practice, something like that. This is the number one thing to be watching. All right, let's see what we got in the chat. We got, every time I want to do a comment, it's going to get, shaky uh will here says hello everybody it's friday 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 and the body knows it um and let's see <laughs> sean, sean devlin is rolling down the windows so we can guess how many followers the pastors buy <laughs> oh man uh yeah it's gonna be awkward because there's an empty parking spot right here i feel like at some point someone's gonna come by here park their car and then see what I'm doing in here. And they're going to think it's really weird. So uh, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. And Cobalt Blue says, uh, you sound fine. Many folks stream from their cars. <laughs> At least you're not driving. Yeah, I've never done that before. So I have streamed from this, not this car, from a car while it was moving before, but it's always when my wife is driving. We've tried that before and that didn't work well because we were in very, very rural Iowa when we tried that that one time. But here, we're in a parking lot. We're in Dubuque. It's a city, so um, we should be okay. Mickey Bean is coming in from North Carolina. And Eric Paramount is grateful for a rest day because they got a big one tomorrow. What are you doing tomorrow, Eric? Got a big run coming up? I have a big workout tomorrow. Basically, my workout tomorrow, I think, is... It's essentially Yasso 800, it's, but it's 8. Eight times 800 at uh, VO2 max effort. I don't know what times that they have me shooting for. Yeah, I haven't looked at the plan recently. And I know, and they haven't updated it. They just said VO2 max effort so far. They'll fill it in probably tonight or tomorrow. Or they probably already filled it in today or they'll fill it in tonight. With two and a half minute rests. So I'm debating. I think we're going to go home tonight. Um, so I'll have some home territory to run on debating whether to run it on like a flat stretch of road, like an 800 meter stretch of road and just go back and forth. Or do I go out to the track for it? I'm not sure. Um, and Eric says he's got a 24 miler minimum tomorrow. We'll see how I feel or I can make it or go bigger. Good luck with the 800s. Yeah, I feel like it's um, it's like eight, it's 800s time, you know? A lot of people are doing their 800s. A lot of people are doing their Yasos. People getting ready for Boston. People getting ready for London. People getting ready. I think Copenhagen's coming up soon. A lot of big marathons coming up too. And Eric, you must have a really big race coming up if you're doing a 24 miler this weekend. Um, Daniel Sharp is here from the UK, getting super excited for London. I am too. I am too. I can't wait. Um, I don't know if you guys just saw, but. Megan Featherston and Runner Beans are going to be doing a carb box event at the Westin in London. I just saw it. So uh, that's going to be Saturday at 10. I think I'm going to be able to go. If you're in London, 
keep your calendar loosely open for 11 o'clock on Saturday. Um, I'll have something more to announce later, but I think 11 o'clock is going to be that time. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to go to both. And then I don't know if we'll have how much food we'll have available at our. So you can make your choices accordingly. All right. Um, Daniel Burton says, Co, what time are you shooting for in London? That's a good question. I'll be I'll be convening with my coaches soon here. And we'll talk about kind of race plan and strategy and stuff like that. Um, when we sat initially sat down, when I started working with them, I was like, I'd like to go for 255 in London because uh, my PR is a 256 high. And so um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm in. I mean, 255 is like 640 pace. Um, and that that feels sometimes it feels very doable. Sometimes it feels very aggressive. So I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what the goal time is going to be. I think it's going to depend on how disciplined I can stay in Boston the week before and how the next kind of week uh, and a half of training goes to now and then we'll have some more indicator workouts tomorrow will be a big indicator workout. So we'll get a lot more information there, but, um, I was thinking about it the other day and I think for me right now, I'll have to talk to my coaches and see what they think. The plan A is run a 255 or faster. Basically, shoot for 255. Plan B is shoot for 255 until I blow up. And then just blow up, like, just spectacularly blow up or spectacularly achieve the goal. So that's plan B. So it might be like a 310, you know. Uh, and then plan C would be more along the lines of um, at some point, scrap it, try to salvage a day and run a sub three, um, which I feel like would also be like, I feel like pretty impressive for me that a sub three is a C goal. So that's kind of mentally that's where I'm at right now. Stevie 76 says that we're a trivia Friday. Guess what's in the glove box? I don't know what's in this glove box. Uh, we've got... <laughs> Um, some arts and crafts that my daughter made at some point and then we put in here. These are little packages that you can um, your kids get car sick. And then um, you know paperwork and stuff like that. So that's, that's what's in the glove box. All right. Mm. And AJ says he ran 14 miles in the on cloud eclipse today. And the Takumi Sun 10 is finally on the Adidas site for 180 bucks. Someone messaged me the other day and said that another place that has them in store is Marathon Sports in Boston. So if you're going to be in Boston, I'm going to be in Boston and get some Takumi Sun 10s. Mm. Patrick Ododina has a 16 miler tomorrow. It's the last quality long run before Boston. King up two times three miles at goal pace. Nice. That'll be a nice spicy workout. Ed Chan says, Whoa, is this a running live stream where it's go branching out into car? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think I, I don't, I, I'm sure I could do car reviews, but I, I enjoy driving and I enjoy like driving for fun. I don't know that I'd be a good car reviewer. There's just so much to review on a car. It's kind of like reviewing a watch. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's lots to talk about, but like it still can't be a 30 minute review. You know what I mean? So you got to figure out what do you want to talk about? What do you not want to talk about? And then like to review cars, the B-roll require, I can't just stick like a camera on a stick and shoot B-roll that way. You need another car full of camera operators to be able to do that. I'll just, you know, you, you, we could just let Marquez keep doing that. Uh, Yuchi Run says, you know, you just got to let the London energy carry you. I think that's a good idea. Mm. Andrew Scott's got 22 on deck for tomorrow. It's a dress rehearsal. Nice. That's an important one. I feel like the most important thing of that is not only just having that long run, but like 
the shoes, the effort, the mental like anguish, if you know what I mean. And then also the fueling, you know. Mm. All right, let me scroll down all the way to the bottom, catch up with you guys. Mm. Frank says, I would have guessed there'd be a registration and insurance card in here. I'm sure they're in there somewhere. <laughs> Uh, Effort Strong says, how will you be releasing your schedule for Boston group runs, meetups, panel hosting? That is, it'll be released soon. I'll probably make a post of some sort. Like there'll be stuff in my Instagram stories, but I'm working with a couple of different brands. And so, um, you know, to just kind of put everything in one place, I'll probably make a story. And then anything that you need to RSVP for, that'll be in Instagram stories the Discord, or the Strava uh, Kofuzi Run Club group on Strava, if it's a run. So that those will be three places that you could find that information. So anywhere that you're finding me, you should be able to find that information out, hopefully. So, but it'll be, it'll be soon. I got one more event that got added to my calendar yesterday. I have a meeting about it in about an hour. Um, and I'm not, I think, I think that'll be open to the public. So I think like you guys will be able to come to that if you guys want. Mm -hmm. All right. Raj Kumar Roshinji has a shoe question for today. Yoko Fuzi. Shoe query. I use the Speed 2. Thoughts on getting Puma Divya Elite 2 as E3 is not there. Thoughts? Thanks. I feel like the E2 is a little bit thin. It maybe can go a marathon distance, and many of the Puma Pros did. But the Elite 2, I think for most people, is going to feel like not enough cushion for a marathon distance. If you want to use it as kind of like almost like a road flat and run up to a half marathon in it, I mean, I kind of use it similar to a Takumi Sen. I feel like it's like a very neutral kind of Takumi Sen-ish shoe. That's kind of how I'd use it. The Speed 2, I feel like has more cushion than you're probably used to. Um, and then the, the E3, I don't, I don't know when that's coming out, but that's not coming out soon. Because when we were talking, I was talking to pe the Puma people in Jamaica, and granted, we weren't there for road marathon shoes. We were there for track and field. And like... The timeline that they had kind of, they were very like wishy-washy on it. Um, the timeline was more like summer for that shoe. So that's not going to be here for a while. I did though, I did finally run in the Endorphin Speed 4s today. I only had an easy run, 10 miles easy on the calendar. Um, I didn't have strides prescribed, but I threw some in there anyway, just to see how I liked the shoe. And I feel like endorphin speed two fans, I think are really going to like the endorphin speed four. I feel like the endorphin speed three, the way that they had that P foam in there, it was kind of airier. So there's more movement, more bounce. This or the endorphin speed four, it feels like a denser foam and at slow speeds, I didn't love it. But when you're picking up the pace a little bit faster than easy, all the way up through the speed ranges, it started to really perk up. So it's kind of a heavy shoe, but it's speedy. I really liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, I'm trying to keep my excitement tempered, though, because the last one gave me a lot of foot problems to the extent that I couldn't run more than three miles at a time in that shoe. Um, today, I ran 10, and I felt great the entire time. So I'll put in a couple more runs to kind of make sure that there's no problems, but so far, really, really good. So I like that one. Ozzy V12 says, what are your thoughts on the speed project going on right now? Um, I'm excited about the speed project. I love relays. Um, I love stuff that's a little bit less structured, a little bit on the unsanctioned side. Um, and I also love, it's like, it's like a, it's like a, it's kind of like a mega Ragnar or like an ultra, but for the roads. And so it has all that like ultra and trail running energy, but you're applying it to roads, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I like it. I don't love like 
daily updates for stuff like this. I don't feel like that's the best way to consume it. You know, as a spectator, I like documentaries that are made about events like this. So I can like sit down and become engaged in the storyline a little bit more. But like getting these like little snippets every day is not as satisfying for me. Uh, part of that is a lot of FOMO because nobody asked me if I wanted to do a speed project team. But that's okay. Maybe one year someone will ask me. Um, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. I, l I like the idea quite a bit. Mm. All right. Spencer Reek said, I did my longest run ever today at 18 miles. This room let me know I am nowhere near prepared for my marathon in three weeks. Going to drop to the half so I don't drop out of the race. I don't know if you mean if you were able to complete 18. I mean, I would I would wait, give it a day. Because if you did it just today was your long run, and even if it went really not well, um, I feel like adjust pacing, adjust fueling. And you could probably hit the distance if that's what your goal is. So, oh, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the rest of your training is like, Spencer, but I wouldn't jump to conclusions too fast. That being said, I had a long run earlier this week, and it went not as I had hoped. And I was like, oh, the sky is falling. It still kind of don't doesn't feel great, but I'm trying to pull out the positives from it too. But I know how you feel. John Dodgson says, no hotspot in the speed four. No, there was a moment where I'm like, am I, is it getting warm in my right foot? It, I was like, is it maybe? No, yes, no. And by the time I was like, I'm not sure, then it would go away. So, so far, so good. But that being said, the endorphin speed three, my first. All right, guys, are we back? Are we back? Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so here's what happened. The phone got incredibly hot. It's really hot. It, it was warm in here. I opened the window and then I also took the case off of the phone too. So hopefully that'll be enough to, um, hopefully that'll be enough to keep things cool though. So sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're figuring out new things as we go along. Figuring out new things. Um, I thought maybe my phone battery had died, which that also may happen kind of soon. Let me check the uh, swipe down. I think I'm doing good on battery. Um, but yes, um, the no hots. <laughs> going back to the conversation, there's no hot spots yet in the endorphins before. All right. Before, before things go completely haywire, let's get to the box for today. Today's package is from On. It's a shoe. 
They sent me this like weeks ago, but it was under embargo. And then I forgot about it because I went to Jamaica. But if you guys are on social media, you guys have seen the shoe around. But, you know, I've seen a couple of different colors of this one. So it'll be interesting to see which one I got. But this is the Cloud, Cloud Monster Hyper. They sent it to me in a size 10, guys. Now, I've been hearing already from a lot of people that this shoe runs big. So I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to wear this. But it is a very pretty shoe. I love this orange that's on here. And this is supposed to be, I believe a piba foam up in the forefoot and you can even see through some of these holes I, I don't know if i can get the angle right for you guys that this piba kind of extends a little bit further back than where it indicates in this orange so i'm really excited about the way that they're doing this and something else that i could see by looking at this so in the transition from like the helion orange foam to this white Piba foam in the front, I believe it's Piba. I'm not sure. Is that there is like a landing pad through the center of the shoe here. So that way the Piba is not just like sitting, it has like something to sit on top of a little bit. So I think that's intended to help with the transition from the Helion to the Piba and the forefoot. And you can kind of see it in this. Uh, can you see it in that one right there? No, you can't. I'll get some good shots for you later, but you can kind of see the way that the transition is happening and it's at an angle. So I feel like this goes back pretty far. And there's almost no clouds in the front of this shoe, at least for a hype, for a monster shoe, you know? And I'll have to double check because now a couple of people have said that there's no speed board at all on this. Um, but the tech sheet that I have doesn't mention it one way or the other. And I feel like that's something it would have mentioned. So I'm not sure. Um, Daniel Burton says, is there a plate? There's no carbon fiber plate. That's for sure. Whether there's a speed board or not, some people are reporting that it doesn't have a speed board. I'm going to reach out to on and get confirmation before I, um, before I make a determination one way or the other, but I, I'd be excited if there is no speed board. Um, yeah. Calvin says he doesn't think so. He says, no plate and no no clouds. Well, there's plenty of clouds. But is there a plate? Yeah. Calvin says, small clouds. Yeah. Which makes me think, if they're doing this, they're getting dangerously close to an on shoe without clouds, which is something that I've been talking about for years. There's nothing in the word on or in the branding of on that says you have to have a cloud. That's just something that they've self-imposed. I'd love to see them try. I mean, the Cloud Boom Echo 3, basically no clouds in that shoe, you know? Someone was mentioning the price of the shoe. It is pricey. Manuel says, I'm sorry, but on Cloud Monster Hyper, 230 euros and no carbon plate is crazy expensive and a no for me. That's a, I don't know what the price is going to be in the US, um, but yes, it is expensive. But Super Blast was at least at retail initially at 220, no carbon plate, but a very fun shoe. So like, is it worth it? Mm, I got a lot of flack for trying to defend the two hundred dollar. I th I always thought it should be one ninety five. It's now two hundred, and I got a lot of flack for defending that price point. So I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm gonna reach out to On to see if they can send me a size nine. Maybe I can send this one back to them and exchange or do something else because I'm very nervous about running in this shoe that's this big. I feel like the Monster and the Eclipse have been a little bit baggy in terms of the upper already. And if I have a, si a full size too big, I think I'm going to not enjoy the shoe. So we'll have to see. We'll see. But I, I love this color. This color, on, on color work is always really, really good. And something that I will do. I didn't bring my scale, so I don't have my scale with me. 
So I'll, when I take it home, I'll put it on the scale and then we'll have spreadsheet madness on Monday. <laughs> Yeah, Lou says it's a. Is it a UK ten and then a US men's nine? I don't. I don't think so. No, it's a US men's not a US ten and a UK nine and a half. Can you see that? Yeah, that, that's what I was kind of hoping that was the problem at first, but yeah. Um. Steve Blackadar says that this shoe's going to come in at two hundred twenty dollars US. That's a that's a tall, that's a that's a that's a high price. It's going to make a lot of people mad right off the bat. Which it it kind of should. Two hundred twenty is a lot. It's got to be really special if it's two hundred twenty. <laughs> Chan says this is a little dark, but this is what the channel would look like if Co was homeless. <laughs> You wouldn't you don't want a van life channel from Kofuzi, Kofuzi Van Life. You know what? If we had the summer tour where they let me sleep in the van, remember that? The A6 tour? If they let me sleep in the van, we could have this every day. I feel like that would actually be fun. I feel like that was a really big missed opportunity. They should have let me ride in the van with the two guys. Um and then I'll just do live stream from inside the A6 van every day. We wouldn't be able to do a while ago, van. We'd have to stop every day and then do it though. That would have been, I think that would have been fun. Frank says Roger Federer really likes the cloud. Are you sure he likes the clouds? Every Federer shoe has only had hidden clouds. So you never see clouds in Federer's shoes. They're always hidden. And in the last version that just came out, in the promo that he did for it, he even touted the fact that they're hidden. So I'm not sure that he likes it. I mean, he likes the brand enough to be a part owner, right? So he believes in the product enough, but I don't, I don't know. By the way, I'm in the mall parking lot. There's a, a tween aged girl and her family walking by in some casual on shoes. <laughs> you guys are you guys are upset that i can't bring this this spreadsheet we, we need that on a spreadsheet stat did you bring the spreadsheet anyway steve blackadar says um uh, and stevie 76 is there's no scale in the glove box there is not a scale in the glove box it's not that kind of car <laughs> oh eliza wants to know if it smells good it's a good question. I mean, the material feels very much like the same material that's in the um, regular on Cloud Monster, uh, on Cloud Monster Two. It smells nice. It's not super breathable though. It feels like almost like a closed mesh up here, but it is flexible. It's soft. Almost like felt at the top of the tongue here. It's nice, but um, I think this is going to be nicer as far as like um, potential blister points on the top of the foot. But it's not that. It's not very breathable. But it smells good. It just smells like clothes. It smells like a shirt. It's nice. It smells like Roger Federer. You guys don't know what Roger Smetter, Federer smells like? <laughs> Pat, Patrick Odadina says, how, how, how don't you have the special edition Astro Van with the scale in the back next to the vacuum? We had a conversation about this a while ago, didn't we? We used to, have, my, my family used to have the Astro Van uh, SE, no, EXT, EXT was it. So it was two bench seats, and then space behind the bench seat. So it was an extra long version. That was like the best car ever. Mm. 
<laughs> Eliza wants to know if there's a, a grocery store you could use the fruit scale. That actually make for a very funny. I might actually try and do that. Just bring a shoe in there. They'd be like, sir, sir, you can't do that in here. <laughs> that would be a pretty funny um, Instagram photo, though. Steve is like, I just turned in. What's going on? <laughs> Are you outside stealing Wi-Fi from a McDonald's? No, I'm just at the mall. We're, my family's going shopping We're with my cousin, uh, my daughter's, you know, cousins, my nieces and nephews. Grandma's here, but I wanted to duck out so I could do a live stream today. Hmm. <laughs> All right, Des Darren says that the regular Cloud Monster costs $170. So the Cloud Monster Hyper is a $50 upgrade. So that's a lot. That's a lot. Remember, what shoes was it? There used to be shoes where it was like, uh, like I felt like a daily trainers used to be like 120 for the regular version and a special edition would be 130. And then like there's shoes like the, um, the Nova Blast always comes out with the Nova Blast SE, and that's like ten dollars more expensive. And I never understood that. I don't understand what they're doing. All right. Mm. Calvin says grocery store workers are either way too dedicated over their minimum wage position or appropriately apathetic to whatever goes on in the store. I don't I think most grocery store workers probably make more than minimum wage, I hope anyway. Pegasus wants to know if I'm coming to Eugene. I don't know. Someone was telling me the other day that there is an all there are um the Oregon Track Club puts on all comers meets in the summer and you can race in Hayward Field. That sounds interesting to me. I'd like to do some track meets this summer. Uh or at least some road miles and road 5Ks. So I don't know if I go all the way out to Eugene for that, but I don't know. I won't be doing the marathon this year, but that would be that would be um, it'd be fun to get back out to Eugene again. Uh, Eric Finsky wants to know. For the Cloud Monster Hyper, what do you get for the extra $50? Aside from the no board, maybe? And what's the big difference? Um, yeah, I'm not sure that there is no speed board in there. Um, which is amazing that they're like, if you're taking out a feature, you charge more for it. Um, but I think the big difference is, I believe it's I believe it's Piba that's in the forefoot of the Cloud Monster Hyper. And so I'm hoping that it has more of like... Um, say like an invincible feel to the shoe um, is what I would hope that you would get from it. I'm, I haven't tried it yet. I just op opened it today. So I don't know, uh, but that's the idea. The way that I've seen it described varies from like, you can race in this shoe to it's like just the cloud monster concept taking to another level. And so like, it doesn't really look like a shoe you can race in. It doesn't weigh like a shoe you can race in it still feels quite heavy and so um i don't if it was a racing shoe then you know 220 makes sense a little bit you know maybe it's kind of falling in that like a solomon s lab specter category where it's like a shoe racing shoe for like people that are going to be on their feet for a longer period of time but i'm not sure i'm not sure like are they going after the target audience that was buying the, like the super comp trainer to run their marathons in that is buying the super blast to race in you know is it trying to compete with i mean the like the weird thing is like is this on's answer to the prime x strong but i don't know i don't know i'm not sure we'll have to run in it and see all right let's do a couple more and then i'm gonna take it uh, get out of here, get out of the car. Uh, Adam says, racing this weekend, Stanford track tonight, world cross country tomorrow, and the Paris Marathon is on Sunday. That is a lot of racing. Hmm. 
I knew about the cross country championships going on tomorrow. Um, World Athletics, if you guys follow them on Instagram, they've been actually putting out some really good content um, to get ready for the meet. And um, it's funny that on the course they've set out like hay bales and obstacles and like part of the course runs through like uh, this like patch of like somewhat young trees. So you're going to have to like kind of weave in and out of the trees to get through there. So I, I, I appreciate the lengths that they're going to to make it more of like a, um, a fast trail race, you know, which I feel like very fast trail races and what like Europeans think of as cross country races are pretty similar in a lot of ways. I don't know. Kevin Hong says for the summer with New York city marathon out the window, I too want to work on shorter stuff after my spring marathon. I want to break six in the mile. That'll be fun. I, I don't, you know, a lot of people got, there was a short minute where a lot of people got obsessed with running sub five miles. I never, I never got obsessed with running a sub five mile. I don't think I could run a sub five mile, but I'd like to run a mile just to see where I'm at. I think I could get to like 520. If I can get in the 515 range for a mile, I'd be pretty happy about that. I don't, I don't know if I'm there, to be honest. I'm not sure. Hmm. All right, Steve Blackadar says it's already listed on Running Warehouse. No plate of the on Cloud Monster Hyper. All right, I feel like they they definitely do their fact checking on that one. So that's so peculiar, so peculiar. All right, I'm still going to reach out to On and talk to them. I I think I need to I mean I need to phone a friend and figure some stuff stuff out. What's the what's the thinking behind it? Mm. Daniel Britton says, Ali Ostrander is running for USA. Uh, Wani Kaladi is also running for USA too, isn't she? So some pretty fast runners for the US, I think. Uh, I don't know who's running for the men, to be honest with you. I think I think the US team is Ali Ostrander, Wani Kaladi, and Emma Grace Hurley. I think those are the three. Emma Grace Hurley just became an ASICS athlete. She was running for Atlanta Track Club, and now she's running um, with a group in, is it in, in Indiana. I think they're in Indiana now, but very excited to see what she's going to do out there. Very excited to see what they're all going to do out there. Santos Cotwall says, any recommendations for a good speed shoe? I feel like this is a good place to end it for a day. There's a lot that are out there depending on what you want. And so um, if you want something that is kind of plated, I feel like the Takumi Sen 10 is one of my favorites or nine or eight or any of those. They're all, they're not, there haven't been drastic changes to that shoe. And so like any of those are going to be really fun for running fast in. Um, if you want something that's not plated at all, I like the Topo Cyclone 2, beaded Piba Foam, no plate, wide toe box, really great for running a lot of speedy miles. And let's see, let's pick one more in there. And then I think if you want something that's more of like a daily trainer, then the Deviate Nitro Elite, not Elite, Deviate Nitro 2 will be my choice. So those are three speed day shoes that I think will be really fun. All right, guys, that's going to be a good place to leave it for today. Thanks for putting up with yet again some uh, wackiness going on in the live stream. But I just want to make sure that we saw each other and got to hang out one more time because once we hit April, I'm not going to see you guys for a long time, almost three weeks, because I got a lot of travel coming up. Um, so I want to make take advantage of the time that we do have now. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Have a good weekend, everybody. Good luck on your long runs. I'll see you guys Monday, 1 p.m. Central Time, back in Crystal Lake.